Good morning everyone. It is a lovely morning this winter day and um, I decided that today I would do a slightly different video. Um, something that people have been asking me a lot and I thought I'd address it in a video instead of just answering you know in a comment. Um, this is going to be my first ever frequently asked question. Um, so I'm going to start a playlist in my YouTube channel on frequently asked questions and I'm going to place any of these videos there. Um, so without further ado, the first frequently asked question is what are you using? What am I using? Well, I can't really boast a large collection of art materials. Um, I am primarily a painter, so before coloring, I was an acrylic artist mostly. Um, I had started in oil paints, developed an allergy to oil paints, swapped to acrylics, learned how to use acrylics, and pretty much um, spent a great deal of time mastering the art of painting with acrylics so that they look like oil. Now this here, that whole um, journey I was on um, has been interrupted by coloring. So coloring has come in and taken over the whole entire production and I haven't touched my acrylic paints except to color in coloring books since I started coloring. Now here's the reason why. Um, number one, coloring takes up most of my spare time. So all of those um, moments and bits and bobs that I would have to spend on my personal work, I've been using to color. Um, number two, I just finished my first ever coloring book and that has taken away a great deal of my personal time as well. Um, so uh, just practicing in the study of line art, which I have not done my entire life, um, I've done it a little bit in school when I was a kid, um, but other than that, um, I really have not um, practiced much line art. So um, really my focus this past uh, half a year has been in both line art and also learning how to use colored pencils. So this is a set of Prismacolor 24 that I then um, added to and created a custom set. Hi, Abby girl, my little kitty here. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to go through each color I have, and I'm going to also post all of this in the description below. So if you want to skip all of my chit-chat, and you want to go straight to the meat and the bones of what I'm trying to tell you, which is what I use, then you can go ahead and just look in the description below. Don't forget to hit that like button while you're at it since I'm giving you all this useful information. And, um, and then uh, you can just grab whatever materials that you're seeing me use that you want yourself. So um, I'm gonna go through my entire pencil set. Um, the reason why is because since they are added to, um, I figure I should be explicit with exactly what pencils I have. <clears throat> and you will see, this is a mixture of old and new pencils. That is because this original 24 set was actually purchased back in, I believe, 2001 or 2002. And I've had them this whole time. So that's how infrequently I used pencils before coloring. And now all of those very old pencils are starting to get smaller. Um, so I figure um, before my entire set is replaced completely with new pencils that I would show you my set and, um, and how I, how I uh, work and what I use. So first off, it, this is a Niji, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, this is a Niji pencil roll and I got this back when I worked at a framing shop. And, um, I, yeah. okay, so the first color I'm going to start off with is white. I also have black. I have dark green. I 
and grass green. I believe that this is apple green. Some of them are um, sharpened backwards. That's because when I was young, I did not know what I was doing. This is true green. We have peacock green. I'm not going to pull this out because it's in the extender. Actually, I will. Um, so this is aquamarine. And you can see here I have it in a pencil extender. And this is a very old pencil extender as well. It looks like we have my little kitty cat coming to help us out. Here she is there. Abs, you going to help us do our video? Okay. So now I have... This is um, a replacement of a color that I use all the time. Ooh, don't, don't do that, cutie booty. Uh, this is True Blue. And Abby's very curious about what I'm doing over here. All right, I have Light Cerulean Blue. Now this is an older pencil. I must have got it. Ooh. Careful there, cutie. She, she's right here. Um, okay. Maybe let's take a pause so that the kitty can get all of her snuggles out. <laughs> cutie. Alright, the little kitty is happily snuggling in my lap. So now we can get back to this. Um, the next one is Mediterranean Blue. I also have here Copenhagen Blue. This is one of my favorite pencils, highly recommended. I have here Indigo Blue. Ultramarine. Violet blue. This one is the regular violet from the original set. Okay. Then we have Parma violet. I don't know if you can see this. There we go. one-handed. Uh, we have Mulberry. This, I believe, is pink. Yep, pink. Okay, so here we're coming up on... This is one of my favorite colors that I've purchased externally outside of that 24 set. This is Magenta. I also have Crimson Red. Carmine Red. Poppy Red, which really, I always think of this as a red-orange. Orange. This is another addition to the mix, Salmon Pink. You now I thought I'd use that for skin tones and I use it for flowers, but whatever. Uh, peach, again, don't really use that for skin tone. One of the flesh tones I use for skin tone, except for maybe this color, Deco Peach. This would be the one I'd recommend if you're trying to buy really nice fair flesh tone. However, I don't use that much because the, the wood is splitting. Uh, I, that's how it came to me, and I've just been stubborn and keep trying to sharpen it. I have light peach here, lemon yellow. Don't use that that much, but I still am happy I have it. I have regular yellow, Spanish orange, 
goldenrod. 70% French gray. I use that for shadows on faces. Dark brown. Sienna brown. I use all of these browns for, for flesh tones. Burnt ochre, that's the one I use the most for flesh tones. Terracotta. And Tuscan Red, and this one doesn't have the name. Okay, so those are all of my pencils. You see, I have no more pencils other than those. Um, I do have a set of Statler Ergo Soft pencils that Joanna Basford gifted to me when she gave me a advanced copy of Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. However, I have not even touched those. Um, I am debating whether or not to donate them or to gift them to a family member. Um, but I'm probably not going to keep them myself because I'm already fairly sure. I've had, I've seen a couple of reviews and I'm fairly certain that, um, the softness that I'm accustomed to with the Prismacolor is just not there with the Statler. So I don't want to really, um, fuss with something that I'm pretty sure I'm going to hate. Um, I would rather give those pencils uh, to somebody who has no pencils and could use them, um, you know, to start off with. So beyond pencils, because I use a lot of other material besides colored pencil in my um, in my coloring pages. So let's go through all of the fun uh, extra bits and bobs. So um, just as a side note, uh, you'll see in this. Um, in this little roll up there's space for a sharpener and a, an eraser and I use that all the time I'm so happy that they keep that in this little roll up I love this roll up um, it's starting to kind of fall apart a little bit on me because I take it all the place like everywhere with me I take it all the places um, look I even have cat hair or whatever hair in it um, but anyway, uh, this roll-up is um, starting to fall apart a little bit, but it was extremely cheap. I think it was like $5, so well worth the money and investment. It keeps all my pencils nicely secured and safe um, while I'm traveling, and it just rolls up to this nice little thing and snaps in place. So highly recommended if you need a pencil case. Um, it's just a really cheap, easy way to get your pencils stored. Um, other than that, I use... Okay, so I was talking about acrylic at the beginning. Well, I do use my acrylics for my pages. Not always, but to add sparkle and shine, I'll use um, my golden iridescent acrylics. So I have a whole range of these. Um, and you can see in my um, Jowie Lem Gold Background Bird Lady video, um, just how I use those. And then I also use titanium white a lot on a, my coloring pages. This is like a finishing touch at the end. I'll actually also mix that with a color sometimes to make just a light like a light color. Um, I use those for highlights, um, adding back in some detail if I've lost detail. Um, just in general, I use that um, very similarly to how people use a white gel pen. Um, since I have the acrylic just laying around, I might as well use it, and I'm very comfortable with it, so that's why I go to that. But you do not have to feel the need to use these paints in your work at all. Um, that's just something, because I have the material handy and available to me, I thought it would be um, useful to use it. So uh, what I use for, to catch my pencil shavings is just this old broken teacup. Um, I broke it myself a long time ago, but I don't throw away things that are still useful. This is still a useful object to me, and this, um, this teacup I found at a thrift store with my mom, so it does have some sentimental value because um, that's an activity that we like to do together. So I thought, um, why not use it as a pencil shavings um, cup? So that's what I use it for. And my sharpener is this old little trusty metal sharpener that I just swap out the blade every once in a while when it needs it. Um, 
I know that my materials are not the best in the world. However, I wanted to show you guys that um, I might not have everything that everybody else does, but um, I make what I have work for me. So my little sister is an amazing paper crafter and she makes greeting cards. She does all sorts of different um, she makes like her own, um, she binds her own books and she makes her own um, little sketchbooks and things like that. So she has kindly gifted me these um, sparkly extras. So I'll reveal the names as I go through them. Um, so the one I don't use that often but um, might still be useful. This is the Wink of Luna. And um, this here is a brush pen. So you can see here it's a brush pen. But it is loaded with uh, sparkly, silvery, shiny bits. Next up we have the Wink of Stella. This is the same as the Wink of Luna, but it's like a transparent... Um, very uh, sparkly light color so I use this one all the time it goes over any color and it just gives a sparkly after effect basically so I love this one I use it all the time um, what she told me is a really neat trick if you're using these and it's dried up a little bit you can just um, swish the brush tip around in some water and kind of milk that bad boy back to life um, you can also put a little bit of water and try and suck it up into the brush um, and reconstitute it that way so if this has dried out do not feel bad you can probably um, make it work for you and then some of my favorite embellishments um, this liquid pearls here. Let me see if I can try and focus it. There we go by Ranger I use this in sea Seascape pages. I also use it for things like moon and snow and all sorts of things where it needs um, this pearlescent uh, really pretty finish and then the other one that I use all the time this is the diamond color of stickles this is another thing that came from my little sister. She's an amazing paper crafter. Um, so those are the things I use to embellish my pages. Um, I also tend to draw and add in detail in my, in my coloring pages. So the first thing that I use to add final touches is a Uniball Signo white gel pen. This is pretty common now. I think everybody's using these, but I am on the bandwagon. I also like to use things like paint markers. So I have here a Pilot Silver paint marker. I have this in gold as well. I'll use other paint markers like Deco Color paint markers. Um, so that's cool. Also, to add in extra details and, um, you know, just draw my ideas out on sketch paper, I'll use this old mechanical um, pencil. And I love the Tough Stuff Paper Me eraser stick. It comes to a nice little point there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a small little eraser stick. Love it. It just hand advances. Um, and then finally for detail and um, at the finished product at the end after I'm done penciling, I will also use this Faber-Castell extra small pit pen. Um, that just allows me to do the line work on the, um, on the page when I'm done. Now, um, one last thing that I'd like to cover before I wrap it up today is my watercolor set. So let me go grab that and I will be right back. Okay, again, since I was never a watercolorist, never really, um, never really considered myself a watercolor artist, I never invested in fine artist grade watercolors. Um, I have this set and I used this at university, um, so that was back in 2001. Um, and, uh, wow, 
it's pretty dirty so I never clean my watercolor palette because I find that over time it gives like a nice earthy muddy brown color that I just adore so um, all of these colors are just dropped in um, and then mixed so this is my Yarka 24 pan watercolor set some of these pans have been replaced over time. You can buy them singly online. I get it through um, Cheap Joe's Art Supply. So I'll leave that link down below. Um, and I just love these. I mean, I've had this set for so long, I don't even think it comes in this case anymore. I think it's in a different tin. Um, but highly recommended. <clears throat> Pardon me. They are pan poured and they're water activated. So what that means is that they're super juicy, like they're kind of sticky even touching them dry. Um, and when you activate them, they just come alive with a lot of pigment. And even though they're considered a student brand, I believe that this set costs about 25 bucks. Um, I still feel like I get a lot of really great color out of them. So if you just want to explore watercolor and you don't want to buy a lot of tubes of expensive paint, um, or if you just like the convenience of a pan set, highly recommended, especially for the quality, for the, um, for the amount of money you pay. Um, I really am very comfortable with these, even though they are, um, below the artist level grade, I guess you would say. Um, I still rather like them, and although I'm looking forward to upgrading into a nicer set at some point, um, I will probably continue to use this set until I die. <laughs> I just love them. Um, so I've been using this set for a long, long, long time. Um, but I also was recently gifted, you guys know I love my sparkly shiny bits. And so this is Yarka. I know it's really not a very, um, okay. But anyway, uh, I was recently gifted this set of metallic watercolor paints by my sister. And you can see I already did like a brief review on Instagram. Um, but what fun. They are beautiful. Um, some of the colors are extremely vibrant and shiny. Um, and they just give a really nice finished, polished, shiny look to your watercolor if you're interested. So this is Prima Marketing Metallic Accents. You can just search on Google Metallic Accent Watercolor and then this will pop up. I believe that this set it runs about 14 bucks on Amazon. Um, so again, an interesting new addition to my um, set of supplies. Seems like my sister's um, really setting me up with a sparkle, so thank you so much, little sis. And um, as always, thank you guys for watching. If this um, video was at all helpful to you, or if you have any questions about supplies, or if you just want to know more about what I've shown you here, please feel free, do not hesitate, drop a comment down below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, I will be showing you guys more materials as I get them. Um, but for right now, uh, this is what I'm working with. And um, I see no problem with it. I know a lot of people are a little bit snobby about their materials. And they're going to say, oh, Prismacolor is not the best on the market. I get it. I get it. Um, I don't have a whole ton of money just to throw around on this stuff. So I'm using what I already have. Um, but it just goes to show you, you can create nice coloring book pages out of whatever you already have. You do not have to go out and buy the biggest, brightest set of 120 pencils. And, you know, I mean, that stuff, it's beautiful. And, you know, I always get a little twinge of jealousy when I see people have really nice supplies. But in the end, honestly, it's all about the work. It's all about what you're actually using to, you know, using those supplies to do. And... In my mind, um, I would rather spend more time and money on a whole bunch of money on materials, um, you know, that I'm, I'm going to end up using up anyway. So, um, you know, as I go, I may invest in nicer stuff and you will see that if it happens. Um, but for right now, you know what? Embrace what you have. Um, seize the moment, seize the day, just go out and color. It doesn't matter if you have Crayola or what, just have fun. 
Um, honestly, there's no room for judgment in coloring. Um, it's all about just self-expression and really just uh, enjoying art for, for art and not worrying about um, what fancy material you have. So uh, yeah, anyway, um, thanks for listening to my long rambling speech. And um, thank you guys so much for watching. Always, uh, you know, always appreciate you um, and your comments. So uh, thank you so much. I hope this answered your questions. Um, if you have more questions, post them in the comments below. And I'll see you guys soon.